Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Clock Synthesis with the SMA100B. In this presentation, we'll explain the importance of clock signals in ADC testing, as well as show how to configure and use the Clock Synthesis option on the Rodeo & Schwartz SMA100B analog signal generator. As the name implies, analog to digital converters, or ADCs, convert an analog input signal into digital sample values, and are a critical component in many modern electronic devices. A second signal, called a clock signal, determines the sampling interval, that is, the rate at which the samples are taken. The clock signal normally must be at least twice the highest frequency of the input signal, and is often even higher. The clock signal also may be provided to the ADC either as a single-ended or as a differential signal, the latter having many advantages, such as reduced sensitivity to common mode noise. As we'll see in a moment, the quality of the clock signal is extremely important for ADC performance, and clock signal quality becomes even more critical at higher frequencies. A good signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR, is important for clock signals, and at higher frequencies, the SNR of an ADC is mostly a function of the amount of jitter in the clock signal. As you may already know, jitter, or unintentional variations in the timing or phase of a signal, causes deviation in the sampling period, and this deviation will appear as increased noise in the ADC conversion result. Here, we can see that SNR degrades rapidly with increasing levels of jitter, and this effect is even more pronounced at higher frequencies. And although minimizing jitter is critical in maintaining good SNR in our ADC, traditional spectral purity is also important. That is, we also want to minimize the levels of wideband noise, harmonics, and spurious emissions in our signals. Therefore, there are two main challenges when it comes to ADC testing. The first of these we just discussed, the need for a high-quality clock signal. The second is that two signal sources are needed, the analog signal that will be digitized by the ADC, as well as a configurable, high-quality clock signal. On the SMA100B, the clock synthesis option allows ADCs to be tested using only a single signal generator. In addition to the analog in, an SMA equipped with a clock synthesis option can also provide a completely independent, high-quality clock signal, either as a single-ended or as a differential signal. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll show you, step-by-step, -step, how to configure and use the SMA100B's clock synthesis option. Let's start with connections. The clock synthesis option provides two SMA connectors. The one on the left is used for single-ended signals, and both are used when generating differential clock signals. These connectors are located on the front of the 3-height unit SMA100B and on the rear of the 2-height unit SMA100B. To configure clock synthesis on the SMA100B, first tap on the clock synthesis power sensor tile and then choose clock synthesis from the list of available options. There are various common clock signal formats and these are selected using output type. Recall that single-ended sign only requires a single connection to the clock sin connector, whereas differential sign, differential square, and CMOS all require connections to both clock synthesis outputs. Let's look at these four output types graphically. A single-ended sign is just a standard sine wave, whereas in differential sign, the clock signal is transmitted in the form of the voltage difference between two sine waves. The same differential signaling is used for both differential square waves as well as for CMOS, although note that in the case of CMOS, the voltage is always positive. On the SMA, the frequency and level of the clock output are independent of the RF output and therefore must be configured by the user. The maximum and minimum frequency values depend on the type of clock signal. For single-ended or differential sign, the range is 100 kHz to 6 GHz. For differential square, the range is 10 MHz to 6 GHz, and for CMOS, the range is 100 kHz to 200 MHz. In addition to specifying level, a DC offset can also be applied. This can be used to shift the amplitude of clock synthesis signals. In this example, our differential square clock signal is shifted upwards by 1.2 volts. This is useful, for example, when the clock signal needs to be moved into the trigger threshold of some types of logic elements. Although the amplitude and frequency of the clock and RF outputs are independent, 
by default the phase of the clock reference is synchronized to the phase of the analog out. For example, if we leave delta phase at zero, the clock signal and RF output will have the same phase. We can use delta phase to shift this. For example, setting delta phase to 90 degrees creates a 90 degree phase shift between the clock signal and the RF output signal. Again, remember that the frequency and level of the clock output remain completely independent of the analog RF output. The final step is enabling clock synthesis output by turning state to on. The clock synthesis tile on the main SMA100B GUI will display the state of clock synthesis as well as output type, frequency, and level. Let's end with a brief summary. Modern high-speed analog-to-digital converters require high-quality clock signals for operation as well as for testing, since poor clock signal quality decreases the overall signal-to-noise ratio performance of an ADC. Traditionally, ADC testing required two generators, one to provide the analog in signal to be digitized, and another to provide the clock signal. The clock synthesis option adds a high-quality clock signal output to the SMA, and thus enables ADC testing using only a single signal generator. Both single-ended and differential clock signals can be generated at frequencies and levels that are independent of the RF output. And as we showed in this presentation, clock signal parameters are easily configurable by means of a simple graphical user interface. This concludes our presentation, Clock Synthesis with the SMA100B. If you'd like to learn more about ADC testing, signal generators, or the SMA100B, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.